What drew you to this project? I mean, the script has got to be the first thing that, that drew me to the project. It was, it's, it's got some, some crazy genius brains behind it. Um, and it was just a page turner, really. And the character was so interesting, I wanted to be a part of telling the story. So, What was it like working with Hilary Swank? You just have to know. I mean, you can imagine. She's a fantastic lady. Um, she's very, very good at what she does. And um, I was just observing her the entire way through. And she was so lovely to me. So it was, it was just a pleasure, really. Is there anything that she taught you or any advice she gave you? Um, not directly, but I was definitely taking like mental notes. And uh, you know, she's just been in the industry for a lot longer than I have. So she, I just, there's a lot to take from that. Just experience is, is, um, is fascinating to watch and see how you fall into it. Cause it's still new to me, you know? So really new. So. Well, I just learned that apparently you're not talking to Rose Byrne inside the robot. I am not. So how did that whole work out? Who were you talking to while filming? I was speaking to Luke Hawker, who's inside the robot suit, who's a trained actor as well. So he was providing the entire performance um, and he was saying the lines and it was brilliant. He just became mother to me, even when it, the, like, the head was off, like the robot head was off. I was like, mom. Um, but yeah, it was all there for me. So it was, he made it, he made my life so much easier. So I actually recently saw you in Teen Spirit. You're incredible. Yes, love the movie. You're amazing. You have an incredible voice. But obviously that's a pretty big cast. Now this cast is very, very, very tiny. What do you think the advantages and challenges are of having a smaller group of people in the film? I don't know. You have to work a lot more on the relationship of the the individual characters because there's only three. Um, you get to play around with the layers of that. So it's... Yeah, I'd say maybe that. So you're from Denmark and you have an, definitely have an accent, but you cannot tell it all in this movie. You have an amazing American accent. Is there one word or a couple words that are more difficult than others that you can think of? In American? I don't know. You would be the one to tell me if I did, because people aren't telling me if I'm pronouncing it incorrectly. Do you want to learn a Danish word, though? I would love to. Okay. I'm trying to think which one is good. Hygge is, you probably know this term, it's like Scandinavian living, it's like coziness and everything you would want, like candle lights and, and you know, having a bath. That sense is called Hygge, and it's something I live for. That is an incredible word. Thank you for teaching me that. You have a gr <laughs> Last question. If there was, in a post-apocalyptic world, if you could have three things with you, what would you want and why? Yeah, like, you know, we put I the gotta say, like a. a she, um, but then again, what I can I charge it? I was gonna say like a computer or or, or a phone, so I can I can watch some stuff and entertain myself because it's gonna be boring. It's gonna be a boring time if I don't have anything to entertain myself. Maybe um, matches. You never know if you're gonna need matches, and I've probably seen too many films where that's the answer. Um, and. <laughs> and um, ooh, um, I don't know. When you the third, what would you choose? For the some like a, a supply of delicious food, a lot of it.